Welcome to the lectures on the empires of the Western Sudan. These are empires that were in the western part of Africa known as the Western Sudan. I will conduct these in pro approximately two to three different uh, videos because of the length. Now the Western Sudan empires included the empires of Ghana, Mali, and Songhai. And these empires ruled this territory for several hundred years. And so where do we get the information we have about these empires? Is it made up? Is it fanciful? Or are we just wishful thinking? The answer would be no. There are several sources that give us a very accurate accounting of these empires and insight into them. First, we have eyewitness accounts, people who lived in the empires and wrote what they uh, saw there, uh, particularly in the Songhai Empire. We have folk historians, archives, books written by travelers, as well as archaeologic, arch archaeological finds that substantiate much of what is discussed about these empires. Beginning with the eyewitness accounts, we have Muhammad Kati, who lived in the Songhai Empire. He was actually born in the very year that Songhai became an empire in 1468. And he wrote the book Tariq al Fatash. And his grandson, Abdurrahman al Sadi, wrote the book Tariq al Sudan. And he lived at the beginning, almost near the end of the empire in the 1500s and almost into the 1600s. And he wrote his book, uh, Tariq al Sudan. Now, Muhammad Kati, as I said, was born in 1468. And this is the book um, which he wrote and is available if you go looking for it. And uh, Tariq al Sudan by Abdurrahman al Sadi is also available. It used to only be available in French, but now you can find it in many other languages around the world. And uh, he wrote this book because he uh, saw the beginning of what he called the destruction of knowledge in the world when Songhai came under attack. And so he felt that he was divinely guided to write down the accomplishments, achievements, and the heroics of the Songhai people so that if ever there came a time in the world where it was questioned what they did and who they were, they could turn to his account of that empire. Other sources of information about these empire come from Arab as well as European travelers who went to the empire for more or less the purpose of spying on the empire because they were interested in the gold. News of the gold had in, the, in these empires had traveled to other parts of the world, and these people were attracted to this part of the world, and they came there to try to find the sources of the empire, and inadvertently in writing, they gave us great insight into how these empires were set up, and how they structured, how they were structured. And so I have three representatives here of each of the empires, of Bakuri of Ghana, Ibn Battuta of Mali, and Leo Africanus of the Songhai Empire. If there are many other uh, people who wrote about these empires, for example, Ghana, there were several other writers, as well as in Mali, several other writers, but these are just representative of the Arab travelers. Leo Africanus was commissioned by the Catholic Roman Catholic Pope to go and live in Songhai for several years. And at the end of that period, it culminated in him writing the book, The Songhai Empire, which is 14 volumes. Contemporary sources include people like William Leo Hansberry, who was professor at Howard University for years and wrote many books, two of which are here shown, 
pillars in Ethiopian history, as well as Africa and Africans as seen by classical writers. Carter G. Woodson also wrote extensively about these uh, empires. His most notable book, however, is The Miseducation of the Negro, where he examined what the educational system in the Western world did to the African mind. He has the Carter G. Woodson Institute in Washington, D.C., housed there in Washington, D.C., and he is most notably known for starting what was at the time Negro History Week and now is known as Black History or African History Month. John G. Jackson also wrote extensively about these empires, particularly in his book, Introduction to African Civilizations. He wrote several other books on various topics as well, Christianity Before Christ, Pagan Origins of the Christ Myth, and many other works. Chancellor Williams lived in Africa for more than 13 years, studying and writing down what he discovered there, and that culminated in the book, his book, The Destruction of Black Civilization, as well as his book, the rebirth of African civilizations, uh, of African civilizations, as many as well as many other books by him. Dr. John Henry Clark, you're already familiar with through the discussions in the class and other things that we have or material we have presented, wrote also extensively and lectured extensively on these empires. My life in search of Africa, who betrayed the African world revolution. Malcolm X, The Man in His Times, as well as his last book, Notes for an African World Revolution, Africans at the Crossroads. Dr. Yosef ben Yakinen also wrote extensively and contributed. Uh, he most notably was focused more on the Nile Valley civilizations, but he gives us the connections between the Nile Valley civilizations and the Western Sudan empires. Now, there are two significant areas in the Western Sudan that must be noted. That is the city of Jane and the city of Timbuktu. Many people think of Timbuktu, they think it's just a mythological place, but it is not. It is an, was an actual place and it's actually still there, though it's not in the condition that it was uh, some 500 years ago. But these places were known as centers of culture and learning. And the reason they were known as that is because people traveled from other parts of Africa, Asia, and Europe to study. It was the equivalent of what today would be a place like New York, where people from various other parts of the world come because, because of the rich culture and opportunities that are available there. And that's what Timbuktu represented in the Western Sudan. Now, the Western Sudan, to understand these empires, these three empires, is to understand, you must understand the Trans-Saharan trade route. The Trans-Saharan trade route was the route in which uh, traders traveled from West Africa across the Saharan desert into the Mediterranean world and to the Asian world as well as other parts of Africa. But who, whichever power controlled that trade route is the, is the power that was dominant at that time. So at one time, the area of Ga ancient Ghana controlled that route. At another period, the Songhaians controlled it. At another period, the Malians controlled it. And so whoever controlled that trade route is who became the dominant power at that time. That is this particular part of the lecture. I'll see you in part two.